All right, guys, we are going to do stage two on the Street Evo. We've already put the sequential shift lever in the car and it works great. But the next step is to install the handbrake. I wanna test this out. I wanna make sure that we get all these other components working properly and that we still have a car that works because when Damon is in town, he wants to shred tires. He wants to use the block as much as possible. I have to measure the lines, the fittings, figure all that out and also the placement for this e-brake. One of you guys sent me a link. I had not seen this before and this is a pretty awesome unit. So instead of running twin master cylinders with all that linkage, this is two master cylinders put into one. There's a split down the middle and there's push rods on either side of this. So it works both sides, both calipers at the same time. And that is because we have ABS in this car. This is still a street car. This is still something that can be driven every single day. So we don't want to take away a lot of the factory comforts and safety systems like the ABS. We want to leave those in, but we also want it to work like a proper drift car. And a proper drift car is not controlled just by throttle. You need these other tools to be able to control the car down to the last millimeter, to really put it in the spot where you want to put it, to get as close as you can to other things, scrape a bumper, but not rip it off and destroy it. This is just one of those things that's going to add a lot of control to this car. This is my pro competition car. This has a sequential shift lever, but the real difference here is this is a sequential transmission. The linkage is connected directly to the shifter. It's just a couple heim joints and a piece of rod that connects the shifter. So you have that really direct feel. Every single time you pull back on the lever, you hear the clunk, you hear the gears engage. That is very different than a DCT transmission. We've got that part working now with all the factory stuff. You pull the lever back, it shifts up. We replace the paddles completely with that shift lever and it does the same thing that those paddles used to do. So that part is sorted, but now we got to do the e brake. In this car, we've got an e-brake with a single master cylinder and it's a pass-through system. And what that means is we're not doing a separate set of calipers where the e-brake would run just those calipers. And that's the only time there's any pressure applied to those calipers is when you pull the e-brake. This one is a combination. So whether you're using the foot brake or the e-brake, both of those are going to the same calipers. The calipers are not split. They're not divided. It's all four all the time. It's coming from the master cylinder. It's going through the brake line to the rear and it gets interrupted by that brake lever and then it goes to the back and it splits off of a T to the two calipers. Now that's really easy in this car because this car does not have ABS. So there's only one line running from the front to the back until we tee it off for the calipers. Where the other car with the ABS, it's a four channel ABS system, which means that in that ABS unit, it's got two lines coming in from the brake master cylinder, and then it has four divided separated channels for each one of the wheels. So if you lock up one wheel, the ABS will work on just that wheel. It's not gonna lock up the whole axle and get that kind of ABS chatter. Really good for driving, stability, braking, all that's awesome. But when we're trying to put an e-brake in it, that just makes it a lot more difficult. And that's the reason we went with that master cylinder. It's a very compact unit, it's kind of long, but it actually fits in the car really well. We've already got the shifter positioned slightly over to the right from center to allow uh, enough room here to mount an e-brake. I did that before we actually ordered this part, before I had any dimensions, and it actually fits really, really well. Drops right in there. That looks pretty much spot on. I always like to have the e-brake a bit farther from the shifter. So as you're driving, you can go straight across to grab a gear and you're not gonna hit your hand on the e-brake. You don't have to pull your hand around. Then when you go from the e-brake, you just basically put your hand straight out. It's right there. So I think that is pretty much a perfect spot. There are these little tabs here on both sides. Those are sticking out past here, but this bracket is steel. So I think what I'm gonna do is chop these little ears off of this side, possibly use these ones or possibly chop them all off and just weld this directly to the steel base that we're gonna make that's gonna get bolted into the chassis here. I'm not worried about welding on this thing. We can paint it, powder coat it, or whatever we wanna do later. The idea is, to get this whole thing done and then scan all of this and do a 3D printed center console that we can wrap. All these electronics are just dangling here, literally held together with 200 mile an hour tape. That needs to get addressed, but that's something that we're gonna have to scan and 3D print because uh, trying to make something out of metal would take tons and tons of hours to make it look nice. First step, now that we got this position, I'm going to take some measurements and just start drawing up the template. We can cut this out. I'm gonna get all the dimensions from the bolt holes, the position of where it is located the side and then decide if I want to have it just stretch out a little farther front to rear if I want to have it wrap around the sides at all looking at how it's all sitting in here I think we'll probably just leave it a single flat piece that's gonna sit on top it's gonna bolt down this carbon is really thick and really strong this is part of the 
chassis. I don't think there's gonna be any issues here. If you guys are thinking this is gonna be a long process, it's actually not gonna take that long, maybe a day and a half to get this all done. And that's gonna be all in this video. So when we're done with this car, at the end of the video, we're gonna take it out to the block and test this handbrake out and see how well it really works. All right, so the shifter right now is just in here with some rivets. I'm gonna drill those rivets out, pull the shifter out. So we take the base of the shifter and get the bolt pattern dimension off of that. So I can enter that into the CAD program and get all those holes lined up. We got a cat in the shop, but it's time for him to go. Last I saw it, it ran towards the back of the road race E46, but when I looked under, I don't see it anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. Somewhere in the Hummer now. What do we do? Do we just start shaking it? Kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> I don't know where that cat went. Back on to the Street Evo. This is not the only car we're working on right now. We're also working on Dave's 599. Which, as you guys probably have seen, Damon was ripping this thing around and completely smoked the clutch. Tim's working on pulling this thing out. It's just about ready to have me go over there and give him a hand with it. So we got to rip this transmission out of the car, which is actually a transaxle. So it sits in the back with a big torque tube with a bell housing. We got to pull this whole assembly out, pull the pressure plate, the flywheel, the clutch disc, everything off and send that off to get copied. I think the flywheel and the pressure plate are going to be okay, but we're going to have to change that disc from a regular organic disc to something that's much more aggressive that's gonna last a lot longer. It's not gonna be as drivable, but we're not looking for a car that we're gonna drive 3,000 miles and stop and go traffic with. This is going to be one of Damon and Dave's block beaters. This 599 is going to be used to rip around the block all the time and also take it out on the streets, take it to car shows, wherever else we wanna go with it. It's still gonna be streetable, but we're gonna put a handbrake in it. We're gonna add some angle to it, bit of a process. The first thing we need to get this out and pull that disc out so we can have it copied. slowly raising the car now. We can only go a little bit up and then we have to get the bell housing and everything off because it's basically from the front of the car to the back of the car, torque tube, bell housing. Is it starting to separate? Yeah. All right, so it should pop out and drop down off of our wood here now. Got it. There we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's out. All right, so now that we've got the transmission, torque tube, bell housing, all that stuff out of the way, we're gonna pull the pressure plate off and then we'll be able to see the clutch disc underneath that. Now that it's all apart, I'm looking at it. I think this actually might be a twin disc clutch from the factory. Weird, it's very thick. It almost looks like it has a double pressure plate, which is cool that they did that from the factory, but also this might be a lot more complicated on building a new disc for this thing. If it's a twin disc, that up. Let's see how this thing goes together and look and see what our options hmm, are. Interesting. It's, it's coming off with a starter gear. You ready for it? Uh, yes. Two hands. Yeah. It looks big and heavy. <laughs> oh, it's heavy. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's smoke. Look, there's pieces of clutch stuck to the flywheel. Is it uh, completely blown out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's uh, welded. It is like. That's uh, not good. Exploded and fused. You might need actually need a pressure plate at this point. I was wondering why the pressure plate wasn't coming off. Okay. Look at that. Destruction. <laughs> All right, so this step goes onto the flywheel. Yes. Oh, now it's coming apart. Yeah, but it's a double disc that's put together. So it's two discs, but on a center spline. In between the discs is the floater plate. Yeah. That's the floater plate right there. The floater plate's held on with that bolt. We might need a new flywheel and pressure plate and clutch discs, like some twin disc. Yeah, a proper setup. I, I would agree. Yeah. Well, it looks like this project is getting more involved. We thought it was going to be easy. Of course, it's not easy. This is so shredded. <laughs> it's down to the metal banding. <laughs> yeah, I just exploded that. 
Yeah, it's the uh, Ferrari 599. But yeah, it looks like it's a twin disc where the discs are joined. I just got off the phone with my buddy Lewis from Clutch Masters, who I've known for a long time. I've run their clutches in a lot of my drift cars over the years. And they are not too far away from us, actually pretty close to where Tim lives. So he said he can probably get us something built using these parts. We'll use the factory flywheel, the pressure plate, maybe the floater disc, they'll resurface them. They will make new discs to fit in here and uh, join it together. It's a good thing that Clutch Masters can help us out with that because uh, it sounds like it's gonna take even more time than we had planned on. In the meantime, I'm gonna get back on this car and draw this piece up so we can get it cut out on the plasma table. Get this e-brake mounted up in the car. All right, a bit of a change of plans here. So originally I was going to take the base mount for the e-brake and make a steel plate to mount everything. But after looking at how thick the carbon fiber is on the tunnel, I don't think that steel plate is gonna do us anything. We're just gonna bolt it down. There's actually some holes here already that we can use. We're gonna cut these tabs off because they're too wide and they stick out into the seat of the driver's seat. Get those knocked off, clean it up, and uh, then we'll just drop this in the car. We'll drill some holes and then we'll be able to bolt the e-brake down directly to the carbon fiber chassis. It's about a quarter inch thick, it is very, very strong. So I don't think there's gonna be any flex or any issues with doing it this way. I'm gonna cut these tabs on the bandsaw because Mike wants them untabbed. I'm unboxing some new parts that we just got. These are Porsche Motorsport power steering pumps. So now we have two more. We've already got one that's in the F12, but these are going in the 599. Well, the stock pumps died really fast, so we're gonna upgrade those. So we also got a bunch of steel braided line, dash three, and a ton of fitting. We can adapt the e-brake into the Street Evo and also both of the 599. Lots of work ahead of ourselves, but first thing first, let's get this Street Evo hammer brake installed so we can test it out. All right, John. All right, Mark. How do you think the Huracan's gonna be as a drift car once it has a shifter and a handbrake in it? I'm curious how that electronic system works. I mean, I know how it works, but I'm curious to see how like how it feels. Mark where the e-brake is gonna go. Then we can pull the master cylinder out of here, mark where the holes are, drill it, and then we'll have to get this thing on the rack, access the bottom so we can put some bolts on it. All right, Tim, once we have the shifter and the handbrake in, how do you think the car's gonna drive? I think it'll be super different, right? Because now there's no like anything in the way of your hand with the no paddles. It'll be cool once the handbrake's actually like in it, so there's so much more control instead of just throttle and understeer and throttle and understeer. <laughs> we gotta move the, whoa, 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 whoa. We got, we got oh. no steering Wait, what's there, going on? Tim. Hmm. Let me just check under the hood. Yeah. Shaft's in there. The, the shaft's in there, but, uh, oh, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> ah. I see the issue. Yeah, that's the, the issue. issue. Well, when we put the steering linkage back on, we gotta move this car out of the way so we can get the Street Evo on the rack so we can drill some holes. Nice fitment. Yeah, it's got a little... Yeah, it's got Tim a little said it's thing. like uh, an LFA. It's down for It's got the little, little gap there. Yeah, don't look like LFA. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh! Is that some LFA hate, Mike? I just, I just don't get it. I don't know what's so, like, what's so good about that car? No, really though. Why is it a million dollars? Dang. But why? Mike hates two J's <laughs> and the LFA I'm, and you know, Corvettes. If an LFA was like 150 grand, then I'd be like, hmm, it's a million? Not very, it's not a very good looking car. No, it really isn't. It's just kind of like big and like bulbous. There's no real like sharp lines on it. It's all sharp lines. Really? No. It, it has like, the rear is kind of boxy. It has like one sharp line. Like everything else is just super like, I don't know. She's a little some wild, like, all right, cool. <laughs> throw, throw a crazy V10 in it. But Mike, it, it, it sounds like, don't you want that in your life? But have you heard, have you heard of V10 M5? Yeah. What are the next steps for the F12, Mike? Lots, lots of steps, Mark. We've got a lot, of, a lot of work to do on this thing. We've got to drop the engine off so that can get going. We've got to weld the intercooler up. I actually brought my welder. It's in the trailer, so we've got to unload that. The wiring harness is being made, so oh he's got a lot of it done, but none of the ends are terminated. They're not plugs on them yet because he has to measure exactly where they need to go. Plumbing, fuel system, water lines, oil lines, oil coolers, and keep going. There's a lot. All right, Mike's got the key. He's going to fire up the Huracan with no paddles, no shifter. No paddles. You just no need the reverse shifter. little thing, right? 
Yeah, and then forward. But I think if I put it in manual, it goes forward. Well, sure. We'll find out. I don't know. Just press it, <laughs> it'll start moving. The wire's going in, and then the little uh, diode resistor, whatever those things are. And then I wired this, so I basically soldered those wires onto where the switch is. But I could still hit that and put it in gear. Let's fire it up. using electric power tools. Power tool <laughs> a, lot, a lot has changed in the week that you've been gone, Sean. That's crazy. <laughs> up. I'm a whole week and a half older, which means you're... Jim's a whole new man. You're Look at a this. week and a half closer to retirement, Sean. Damn, that's <laughs> up. Oh, it's just... It's it was, little, it was a, a T30. Scratch. Give it a little... Yeah. Finesse it. Yeah. There you go, force it. Yeah, you gotta just yep. jam it in there sometimes. <laughs> There you go. You know, if it don't fit, make it. That's right. <laughs> Damn, there's a lot of tubes. Oh, that might be a problem. Damn. <laughs> Remember when I asked if there's anything down there, Mike? No, just pipes. Just a lot of uh, coolant pipes. Those aren't important. Yeah, they're fine. It's not gonna be easy. That's a... Uh... You can be dodging pipes. Yeah. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Almost blasted your camera. Uh... It's a friendship bracelet. Mm. Mm. What kind of tire is that? Taste it. Is that Michelin? Mm. Taste it. 295. Okay, it's kind of chewy. It's just there's no, like, there's enough clearance between the carbon and the tubes, there's no room. So we'd have to drop the tubes. That's, that's not fun. I don't want to do that. All right, let's look inside again. Maybe there's a way we can make that plate bolt in rather than bolt through. If we have it wrap around, there's a nut sir there. And a nut search on the other side. I think if we do, if we do have sides to the plate, and we add some nut search that way, that's going to be a lot stronger than if we just go with a nut search straight down to where it wants to actually pull out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we'll have to do. So probably raise raise the plate a little bit. I think we'll we'll just weld this to the steel plate, so that way this doesn't need anything, mm. right? We don't need to fasten that down. And then for this, we can just go back in. We can just go back in with rivets. We can just use steel rivets it's gonna go through the steel plate. Even the aluminum rivets that we put in there were already strong enough. Back to the original plan, making a steel plate for this thing. That's gonna be not just on top, but it's gonna wrap around with maybe an inch on each side hanging down. So we can uh, grab those two nut certs and probably put another two or three on each side to get it all secured. And then we should be good to go. Steel plate, some more nut certs, and uh, bolt that plate down to the chassis. went and picked up this uh, eighth inch plate from my shop. It's too big to uh, really be able to work with right now. Get it this size to cut out on the plasma table. But unfortunately the plasma table is having an issue right now. We're still tackling that and trying to figure out what's going on with it. But for now, we've got to keep moving forward. So we're just going to do it the old school way. And cut some metal by hand, drill some holes with a drill bit. <laughs> you fresh got you, got you. Fresh. Oh. <laughs> So while Sean's working on making the mount for the e-brake and the shifter, I'm gonna start working on the line. So I've got uh, some stainless braided Teflon liner line here, some dash three fittings, and also some adapters to go from a 10 millimeter thread to a dash three AN fitting. So I'm gonna start setting all these up. I'm gonna get them fit on here, get the lines kind of routed forward, how are they gonna go? And then I think I'm gonna put them through the firewall and cut them to length in the car. Cause it's gonna be kind of hard to route this through. I could use something like a piece of rope to try 
to get that measurement, but that's gonna take a lot of time and it's not gonna be that accurate. So the best way to do it is actually just build the lines in the car, mark the lines, pull them back out, cut them. Um, and also by doing that, I'm gonna be able to go through a smaller hole in the firewall rather than having a hole that's big enough to fit all four of these to go through. We'll just get the lines through there so it'll be a nice, you know, maybe a three quarter inch hole at the biggest. All the lines will be nice and routed. So the ABS pump in this car is actually in the center, which is uh, unusual, but actually really easy to get to. So these two in the center here, the HL, that's the rear left, and the HR, that's the right rear, those two lines are gonna have to get disconnected and basically interrupted. So we're gonna take those two lines out and those are gonna get routed into the car and then the two that are open from the pump are also gonna get routed in the car, making those lines longer to fit inside the car so we can attach them to the e-brake because this is a pass-through system. But to do that, we're gonna have to get all those lines fit into that area, make sure we don't have any interference with anything else like the windshield wiper motor here. So we'll have to kind of go down and over and I found a hole in the firewall that's already here and it was actually the factory hood release. Obviously we don't need that anymore because this is no longer a regular street car. This is the street Evo with the race car body kit with the pin on hood. So this can go through that hole right there. It looks like should be just enough room to get all four of those stainless braided lines through there. Yeah, what are you doing? Welding. What are you welding? So since we had to do two piece, or well three pieces, just tacking it in position in the car just so nothing moves around and then we'll pull it out finish welding it and then drill out the pilot holes for the rib nuts and then should be good to go. Sick. Yeah. All right, so I got the brake lines roughly measured a bit longer than we're gonna need them. So now I'm gonna cut them. That way I can get them in the car and position them where they're gonna go. Ready to go. So we got the bracket all welded up and then I just drilled the holes for some Clecos just to hold it in uh, position for now. Bit of a curveball here. Usually, uh, at least from what I've seen on uh, Porsches and stuff, these are 12 millimeter inlets and the brake lines are 10 millimeters, but they've actually got some 12 millimeters here as well. Two 10 mils, two 12 mils, and they did that so you can't mix up the brake lines, but we're trying to find an adapter for the brake line here. So we need to adapt that 12 millimeter by 1.0 thread to a dash three. It's a female fitting on one side and a male fitting on the other. And I have fittings that'll fit into the ABS block, but I don't have a fitting that's gonna fit on that line to adapt it to a dash three. I don't wanna cut the line, for any reason this doesn't work, then we've now cut the factory brake line. I've got some research to do. I need to find that part. Mm. I'm digging through the uh, factory F12 parts right now to see if there is a fitting that we could pull off of it, maybe cut it, weld another fitting to it to make the adapter. Um, we can try that one down there. So that's the one that I pulled off on this side. You're looking in the Porsche now? Yeah. I really hope that we find something on this car, just so that way we can have Porsche parts in Damon's car. He'd love that. Unfortunately, no, Porsche's using all 10 millimeter here. Not 12 millimeter because, I don't know, Porsche mechanics don't mix up brake lines, I guess. It's not a, not a problem. Okay, I'm with the Porsche stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I went by my shop and luckily, I had a fitting that's gonna work. So now we've got a uh, 12 millimeter brake line to a dash three fitting. This is what we needed to finish the project. So now we can get back on it, finish the brake lines, get it all dialed in, bleed the brakes, and then we can test it out. We got the lines in the car. They're all trimmed to length now, and now we're assembling them. It's kind of tedious, kind of a pain to do it inside of the car, but it is uh, necessary because the hole that's in the firewall is just big enough for these four lines to go through. Three done now, and we got the last one here. So we've got the, uh, the two nut, the nut here, and then we've got the uh, little acorn that smashes down. So flare this and try not to poke yourself, which I already poked myself about 600 <laughs> times. It's uh, kind of a pain, but we'll get that on there. And then the other side of the fitting goes on there. And then this gets screwed in and tightens up and we'll be good to go. We'll flush the lines out real quick, spray a little brake cleaner and air in, blow them out from that side, bolt it all together, bleed the brakes, and this thing's ready to rip. Dude. Yeah. It's exciting. Dude, I cannot wait for this. It's, uh, it's gonna be so sick. This is going to change the way that this car drives, especially out here on the block. Completely. Completely. We're gonna have so much more control over it now. It is, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a huge, huge game changer. So we also have a very special guest to take a look at the car. He's someone I know. He's someone that Damon and Dave know as well. You guys are gonna get a real kick out of seeing him. So uh, stay tuned for that.
All right, brother Sean, what's happening, brother? All right, brother Mark, <laughs> Deacon Mike. So all the fittings and everything, all the lines are all good to go. Now it's time to take the wheels off, lead the master. Hopefully there's no leaks. No spillage. All right, time to bleed. All right, brother Mike. Gotta get some fluid moving in that direction. Oh yeah, there it is. Down, close. Down, close. We have pressure. That is awesome, it feels really good. Brake pedal's nice and firm now. Shifter's in there. Dude, Dude. that's so cool. This is pretty dope. We need to put the wheels on now, put it on the ground, make sure everything's good to go, and then start ripping this thing around. All right, ready to test this thing out. I cannot wait. This is super cool. You guys have been working super hard on it. Had some hiccups along the way, but here we are. This is the time, Sean. This is the time. This is it. Yes, what it time is. is it, Sean? It's time. The it's time. the time. You ready, Mike? I'm ready. All right, let me get the cold start. Here he is, the man himself, Sam Hubinet. He is the very first Formula Drift champion. He has driven basically everything from, everything you can think of, really, right? You do ice, you do <laughs> snow, you do gravel, whatever, right? And you're in all these crazy commercials now. So yeah, you've yeah. got a like an insane resume. Well, that means I'm very old, I guess. But well, uh, <laughs> I, know, I got some grays here too, catching up. No, but yeah, no, I mean, growing up in Northern Sweden, learning to drive on frozen lakes, from there coming to America and trying to pursue stunt driving, drifting got me into that new field with became the Niagara champion from a drift yeah. and uh, got into Fast and Furious franchise for a little bit and took me, and I've been just uh, blessed driving cars for professional for I think 30 years now. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, uh, I've seen all these movies that you're working on now. This car behind us, you had a car very similar to this before. Yeah. Uh, where you had a Huracan and you installed a handbrake in it. Yes, yeah, so me and Stina had a Huracan, you know, five years ago something, decided to put a handbrake in it, ran into some obstacles with that. So Dave said, you know, come down and check this out and see what you feel. So that's what I'm here just to evaluate what you've done and see if we can do some improvements. And I'm yeah. sure you can. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, with this car, it's already very modified and Damon's not afraid to modify it even more. Yeah. And this is kind of stage two. So first thing is we put the sequential shift lever in. Yeah. Damon had a blast driving it around just changes the way the car feels, you know, just being able to grab a lever instead of the paddles. Yeah. And now we just got the e-brake in. Yeah, getting your feedback on this would be, no, I'm looking would be forward awesome. To, it's not the every day I do drive supercars nowadays, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm comfortable with letting you drive the car. You know what you're doing. So, why don't you hop in? I, I feel pretty good. Yeah. I know you <laughs> do. <laughs> I know you do. It's a good looking car you guys built. Master Mike. So excuse the mess in the interior. We're not uh, we're not exactly buttoned up here yet. It's a work in progress. Yeah, you know, just testing testing theories at this point. So the start button's floating around over here. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Same with the button for reverse. Okay. Um, All so, right. You, know, you got you I'll got your this. controls there. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Basic. It's got yeah, so. Oh yeah. yeah, just up hold shift, back, shift, down up. shift, down shift. Yep. Handbrake. And then you got your handbrake right there. Looks pretty familiar. Should be good. We'll we'll fire this up. Fire it up. We'll turn off the track control since it's easier for me to reach. Let's put it in first gear. Boom. Shoot a bam. Just have to remember which one's full. Now they're so close. They shot it. Yeah, exactly. So you know, e-brake I put a little bit further forward, so shifter is kind of straight yeah. across. Get 
get a little more speed. I'm gonna reverse and try second gear. It's uh, it's grabbing. It's a little soft, but, but yeah, definitely. I think we might need to re-bleed it. Yeah, because um, we did a pretty solid bleeding yesterday. But you know, with the e-brake, with the double masters and all that, I think we still yeah. have a little air in it. It'd be nice if it could be a little more aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Because when you pull it, you want it to. Yeah, you want to feel that instant yeah, lock up. Too. All right, we're gonna try to set, put in second gear, and then see if I pull the handbrake, if, if the sensors will kick it down to first gear. Yeah. Or still, that's what I was struggling with my car. Oh yeah. So basically, it sees the car slowing down. It sees the rear wheels lock up or yeah. something, and it said, "Hey, we're at a stop." That's what the go down caused problem for me. I come in half corner, second gear, yeah. pull the handbrake to adjust a little bit or, or initiate the drift. And then it kicks into second, first gear, and that was like holding the handbrake longer. So now you just could spin out, or exactly, or just yeah. Now you have now you're on into, the limiter in yeah. first, and you don't have enough exactly. Speed. So I was decelerating on the first. So now you just you release the handbrake, but it felt like you kept it. Yeah. So let's try that. <laughs> Kicking to first, yeah. So it's doing the same thing as my car did, yeah. Um, which causes you can't just stay on the second gear and continue the, the speed and flow in the bigger, you know, arch yeah, corner. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now it's getting it's getting a little more actually more soft now when I try to turn around here to the 180. I it's felt it's it was changing, even, yeah. yeah, yeah. There must be some bubbles left yeah. in the system, it's, it's brand new mod, so. <laughs> All right, Mike, how'd it go? It went well. He was able to get it into second gear. A couple times it just downshifted to first. Uh, yeah, what was your feedback? Same kind of thing as your other car? Yeah, you know, when you lose the engine, you lose power steering. That could cause you to end up where you don't want to go. If you have a little wheel spin, then they might be okay, but to really get an initial so full lock. Yeah. Then it, doesn't like. then it goes into first or obviously stalled. But when you want to initiate, you want to pull it because you want to set this car up in yeah. a good angle. So if you want to make it really aggressive, you want to lock them up. Yeah, if you want it to go and like step out fast. Yeah. If but, you pull on it gradually, it's kind of like pressing yeah. the brakes gradually, right? You're kind of like decelerating the car. And then at a certain point, you get enough weight on the nose to where the rear wheels will slow down enough to get you to slide. But you have to be really careful. Well, you have a challenge to do. Yeah, you know, we're, we're doing stuff that, uh, well, I think you're the only one that's ever put a handbrake in one of these cars before. Maybe there's someone else now, I don't know, but definitely when we did it, we you, were pretty, you guys were the first we're pretty sure we were the first in the yeah. world. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for your feedback. Yeah, and, it was uh, fun. Thanks for coming down and shredding some tires here at the block. I know, yeah. the block, it's really cool. It's cool to see Block's name here and just, uh, you know, we're burning a rubber in memory of him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, All right. Thanks again, man. Good to yeah. see you. See you. All right. Take care.